When I first heard about Alien Worlds, I was mega excited. I love any and everything to do with space. But what I love even more are aliens or docufictions. When I was smaller, I used to write a lot of these, what people now call today, docufictions without even knowing what they were. Here's a really, God, here is, oh dear. Here's a really embarrassing uh, tidbit about me. I used to play with my markers and pencils. I used to collect them because in my mind, each of those little pencils or pens, many of them didn't work anymore, represented a creature of whom I'd be talking about in little movies in my head. I would spend two hours making a full featured film in my head and using the markers or pencils as the characters. Of course, in my mind, they didn't look like markers and pencils. They just looked like whatever alien they were. So an orange pencil would look like an orange dragon or represent an orange creature like this one. Even today, when I'm making up my stories, I will use those characters or those pencils and pens or markers as a reference for what I'm talking about, especially if there are a lot of characters in the story and I need to keep track. Making up stories of wonder and fantasy are one of my favorite things to do. So of course, when Alien Worlds came into the picture and we were getting yet another awesome docufiction, I was over the moon about it. So this is going to be my review of Alien Worlds on Netflix. What I thought about it, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. And evolve. So let's get in what I liked about it because obviously I was fangirling over this like mad and it's really easy to find a whole bunch of stuff you can like about stuff like this. I mean, what's not to like? The designs of the creatures and the alien concepts are new, bizarre, and exciting. The worlds are magnificent and wondrous. <laughs> Fart, spinning flying turds, sky full of shit. Sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody must have been thinking that too when they watch this, let's be serious. I like being transported to another place just for the time being. So far, there are only five of these episodes, but after seeing this and enjoying it, I started feeling Godzilla King of the Monsters syndrome, and anyone who's watched my past videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If the program is called Alien Worlds, um, why are we seeing more of our world and less of what the documentary is about? I think the alien segments are probably like less than five minutes. And I did calculate it. And when I looked at the segments for the alien worlds or just the aliens in general, the aliens are barely on the screen. I mean, just as I'm enjoying, just as I'm enjoying what's on screen, I'm like, wow, I really like this. Look at what's going on. The aliens are so cute. Look at this world. Just as my mind starts to be translated into this wonderful new territory, we get a segment of, but on earth, this happens and that happens. And I'm like, okay, is this about earth or about alien planets? Because all I'm seeing is freaking earth. And then the thing is, the Earth segments are way longer than the alien segments. So Netflix has this little countdown on the bottom of the screen where you can see how much of time you have left of the episode. You know what I'm talking about. And I've, I've looked, I've counted it. Four minutes in between alien segments, four to five minutes. Then when you go to the alien segments, okay, so the human segments will get, or Earth segments will get like, let's say five to six minutes, sometimes seven minutes. Alien segments, five to four minutes and they keep cutting back and forth from Earth. If you're gonna cut back to our planet, show a small segment to make your point or to give people an idea of what you're talking about. I don't want to feel like I'm on commercial break every time I'm watching what's going on on our planet. Yes, our planet is great and has a lot of beautiful things, but there is a time for that and we have documentaries for that already. Why are you doing this here for a program that is called Alien Worlds? I just don't get it and I was going freaking mad. The other thing I found a problem is they reuse some of those clips over and over again and that would have been fine because I've seen other science documentaries or docufictions do that, but we don't have a lot of footage to begin with with these animations. And I understand that there's a lot to make, but if you're gonna make something like this, make sure that you have footage for every scene possible. And then I would have felt better if they didn't spoil so much of what we got in the trailer and in the pilot before everything started. A lot of the stuff that would have been new and exciting, they spoil it. And I'm like, okay, it's fine because we're gonna get even more footage. Nope, you get basically everything that you saw and a little bit more and that's it. I did like the prospect of the way the alien bunnies mated. That was freaking weird. Life moves so fast on this planet that they have to deposit these worms or their gametes are these strange ass worm things. 
that just crawl out from their crevices and then the gametes go and find each other outside the body. How you doing, girl? I'm doing fine. You looking sexy, girl. You looking good too, daddy. Girl, I want to suck your face with my face. <clears throat> oh, oh, God. Oh, 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 shit. I'm sorry. That's what goes on in my mind when I'm watching it. You know yours does too. Don't front. Then we're back to Trinidad. Ugh. I see what people are talking about the delivery because I think it could have been done so much better than it was done. And we actually did have a program like this in the past. And someone told me about it and I was so excited because I'm like, man, I think I missed this. But then I looked back and I realized that I actually had seen this docufiction a long time ago. I just didn't remember that I saw it. And it was so much more enjoyable. It's called Alien Planet, and it has creatures that are a lot less familiar. You only get to see the people talking to make points as though it's real, and then you go right back to the aliens. Human talking points? Aliens. I don't remember the last time I saw any Earth footage in this. It's beautiful. I love what they do here. You feel like you're watching an alien documentary. And it's real. It's so worth it. So after I've watched this Alien Worlds, even though I did enjoy the Alien segments, because like I said, I love anything Alien and astronomy, I will go back and watch this just to, you know, feel better. To get the real delivery. And my partner was watching it with me too. And th that's no. Maybe one day you guys will get to hear from him. Because he has a lot of interesting takes as well. But he started watching it because I told him about it. And that's why I didn't do a review sooner. Because he was like, you know, you gotta wait for me. I wanna watch it too. And we started watching it. And as soon as the Earth parts came on, he was like... This is boring. This is like, I mean, <laughs> I like this stuff too. I like docufictions, but he just did not like the delivery. And I totally agree with him. And when I went to watch it on my own, guess what I did to somewhat enjoy the experience? I fast forwarded all the segments with Earth in it because I didn't want to see that. That's not what I went to watch a documentary or docufiction on alien worlds about. We know there's cool stuff on Earth. It doesn't belong in an alien docufiction. So that's what I thought they did wrong, and I think that the alien planet did it a lot better. Hell, the one I was geeking out about on YouTube. Which happens. Now, the thing with Life Beyond, or Mel Melody Sheep, he's a YouTuber. Awesome. If you guys didn't see my review on it, you should definitely do it. But I think you should go and see it yourselves because it is totally worth it. Okay, so what he does, you'll notice a difference. In the docufiction on Netflix, it's like, aliens, aliens, on Earth, this happens. Let's go into a six minute segment of what happens on Earth. But look how Melody Sheep does it. It's so much better. He does refer with things from Earth, but he doesn't stay on Earth because it's not about Earth. Check out the segment from Melody Sheep, Life Beyond 2, to see exactly what I'm talking about. On Earth, plants appear green because they absorb the other wavelengths in the sun's light spectrum. But stars come in many colors. See? Right back to it. He barely spends any time on Earth because it's not about that. It's about life beyond Earth, not Earth. There's a million documentaries for that. So this guy says on Earth, we have this. But on alien planets, this is what we have. That's the way you're supposed to do it. And so his delivery, some random YouTuber, is thousands time better than what they did here on Netflix. Not saying that the production was horrible because I did like the parts with the aliens. I loved it. But I think they did a little bit too much of cutting away and then leaving it cut away for longer periods of time for Earth. So just to point this out, because this is 37 minutes, but he did point out again, Earth. Earth, but look at how he does it again. At 10 minutes and 28 seconds, he is going through the vegetation. He's already been doing this for segments of the animation and the ambience and everything makes you feel like you're so away that you're in there. He's not even showing a lot of animation, not as much as you would expect from a docufiction, but you don't even feel it because of his delivery and the way he does it. Look at what he says here in this segment. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, just real quick, that little segment right there where it goes, da -da, da -da. it kind of reminds me of I Am Legend a little bit. I'm sorry, I love music, so I pick up that stuff like really easily. People think I'm weird. They're like, how the hell did you pick that up and connect it with this thing over here? I guess it's a musician thing. Anyway, look at what Melody Sheep, Sleep, Sheep, Melody Sheep. Look at what Melody Sheep does here. 
talks about the alien life, and then... Earth itself may have once appeared purple due to a pigment called retinol that was an early precursor to chlorophyll. Some think that retinol's molecular simplicity could make it a more universal You see? He barely just touches on Earth for a reference. Earth might have been this way because we live here. This is the only thing we have a reference to as a planet that we've lived on. And then he's like, Earth might have had this because of such and such and such. But the alien planets over here, such and such, it's all about life beyond. It's all about the alien planets. And that's why his video was so successful. And that's why people enjoyed it, I'm sure, a lot better than the delivery of the Netflix adaptation of Alien Planet. The people have spoken, though. They have. They have spoken. So yeah, I think it's a cute production, but it could have been done a lot better. Too much Earth, and then a lot of the great parts about it were spoiled. Oh, shit! In all five of the segments, you get to see different planets for each episode. Barely. And then we meet this guy. He's adorable, but at the same time, I'm like, I understand where you're coming from, but you're a bit crazy, because... You know, I look at the logical side of things and I get where some people are coming from, but I don't like playing with fire. And he's talking about aliens in the last episode, right? And sending out messages to them and whatnot. And I did wonder, like, why didn't we send more messages? I mean, we can aim them at different places. Sure, it would take like 25,000 years or some to reach other places. But what's up with that? I haven't sent more messages is because we're afraid. Because the blockbuster science fiction films show aliens coming to Earth and annihilating us. Media has a habit of playing things up, but at the same time, why do you think that they've made those movies and TV shows? We've done the same shit to members of our own species who we saw as less technologically advanced. It makes you think the aliens won't do the same thing. This is his argument as to why we should do it. And trust me, I hear where he's coming from, but I think he's romanticizing this a bit too much. When it comes to this, I would rather be on the paranoid side of things to protect our planet since we can't get off of it if something happens. When I say get off of it, I mean we cannot all evacuate off of it and instantly have somewhere else to live or even have somewhere in space to live in the meantime. Not unless we're sending like a few people in a capsule. Even the dudes at the space station still require resources from Earth to get there and help them out. And if something does happen at the space station, the only other place they can go is Earth or into the nethers of space. I think the, the most prominent challenge is the concern that some people have that transmitting intentional messages um, will lead to an alien invasion. And I think the easiest response to that is our planet has been giving off evidence of life for two billion years. As adorable as this is, ah. This guy lacks a little bit of logic, if I may say so myself. Yes, we've had evidence of existing for a while, but that doesn't mean that just because we exist, that the aliens are gonna naturally know where we are. Space is really, really vast, and some of these aliens might be millions of light years away, different galaxies, different universes for all we know. So there's a difference between knowing that something exists and then ringing the dinner bell and drawing attention to it. It's like going back to the Triassic or Jurassic period and you see a bunch of dinosaurs and you're happy to see them. Yes, you're leaving trails of your existence. You're pissing and shitting everywhere. But the dinosaurs don't yet know that you exist. So what are you going to do? Go out in a field and ring the dinner bell and be like, Heidi ho, bitches, I'm here. Ring, ring, ring. Come look at me. That's not very smart. Furthermore, these aliens, if they are more technologically advanced than we are and we don't know anything about them, they're assuming that if they're getting this message and they're going to come find us or talk to us, that they will have at least the same kind of technology. Why are you telling them everything about us? We know nothing about them and you were telling them every single thing about the human race. What we look like, what we do, our weaknesses, where to find us. You wouldn't even give out all your information and your whereabouts to people online here on Earth. Why would you do it with fucking aliens? The thing is, whoever you're sending this message to, you don't know who's getting it. You don't know if these aliens are so advanced that they look at us like ants. Look at how we treat ants. It's not like we go out of our way to crush them. But if you find out that you have a swarm of ants in your pantry, you know, you're going to take care of it. There's no malice in our minds. Let's be real. I'm going to have those people that are like, well, I like ants and I would never do that. Okay, we're obviously not talking about you because apparently you're special. But a lot of people 
just look at ants as these minuscule little beings. We don't go out of our way to hurt them, but at the same time, they're so beneath us complexity-wise that we just step on them without even thinking of it. We can go outside and we're not like, wow, be careful of the ants because, you know, you might squish on one's head and bust it open. No, we just walk. It is what it is. We see one with her arm. We're like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm tired of the squish. Sending out messages to God knows whatever creature is out there is the same thing as ants going inside your pantry and going inside your food, but you know that long line that they all walk in, they lead it back towards where their nest is. That's essentially what you're freaking doing. So I'm sorry, but I didn't really agree with him to the degree that, you know, we're supposed to be sending out messages and, you know, it is what it is. And you guys aren't being, you know, progressive enough. You are the man that is going to damn the human race. Then he goes at night and continues sending out message, Lord have mercy. Now, I do agree that, yeah, you should go and explore. Now, I think the way to do it is, you know, you go out to another planet and you investigate. That way, if shit hits the fan, you can go back home. While they may still be able to trace you, I think it's better to go out there and explore than to, I don't know, call people to your place of residence where they can't leave and once they're there, they can do whatever the hell they want to do, like eradicate your entire species. Not even that. What if these guys do come to Earth? What if they're friendly? And they decide to come to Earth and be like, oh, hee <laughs> hee Tweedledee, look at these little things. They're so cute. Let's take them home as pets. And they have some weird bacterium that infects all of us and makes us turn into fucking ash. This is not a smart way to look at things. And I don't believe that they had let this person, like, I mean, I guess everybody was on board with it. But then people were like, come to think of it, this is not a good idea. We could be calling down a hellstorm on our asses if there is another bright civilization like ours. All you gotta do is look at every intelligent social hierarchy organism that we have on our planet alone to base off of. And look at the evil stuff that they deal with. And the thing is they know they're doing it. Dolphins, apes, some of those creatures with social hierarchies, and they also eat meat or they're omnivorous. There's some sick shit that goes on in those social environments. The way they treat other animals too. Just remember, aliens would be the chimpanzees in this clip I'm about to show you, and we would be the raccoons. He's still... Yeah, they're all laughing and ooh and aww, but then screaming and... But then later there's running and then screaming. Can we for once learn from the past? Look at what we've done to other human beings in every part of the world. People want to just blame it on America, but I've seen cases in every single country where they do some evil shit to other members of their own species. What in the fish taking a whole butter bath do you think is going to happen when an alien species, possibly more advanced than we are, comes into contact with us and we help them get there. Not smart. Anyways, I did like the little program. I told you what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. What do you guys think? Well, I think that's a big vial of piss. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.